What's going on guys? I'm Lakota from MYR Mediums and this is vlog number 18. One of my favorite films from the top 10 list that I made just a few videos ago is the original Pet Cemetery, And I played around with the idea of doing a painting related to that movie. But as it would turn out, I already did a Pet Cemetery piece just a couple months prior to quarantine. I don't feel like doing another one. Now somebody suggested that I do a painting of the creepy mask from the new remake, but I haven't seen it yet, so I have no idea what they're talking about. The idea of masks got me thinking, three of my favorite characters from a classic Tim Burton film wear masks, and I don't think that I have done any artwork related to these three amigos yet. And in case you haven't put it together yet from these hints and my thumbnail, those three characters are Lock, Shock, and Barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas. Let's get started. It's been a long time since I've done any Tim Burton art. I think my sandworm piece from a few videos ago was, it was probably the first Tim Burton art that I've done in, it's been years, probably close to a decade. And there was a pretty good reason for that. Uh, when I started out taking commissions, like very early on, it seemed like every other request was for a Nightmare Before Christmas piece or an Edward Scissorhands or something Tim Burton related. And people would be like, but you can draw the characters in your style. And then I would draw them in my style and they would say, this doesn't look like Tim Burton art. And then I would just call up old Tim and be like, hey, Timmy, I got someone here that wants an original Tim Burton drawing in your style. You got time for that, homie? And he'd be like, sorry, fam. Me and Johnny Depp were just snuggled up here talking about how great his performance was as Willy Wonka. And that would say, I'm so sorry the early onset dementia has gotten this bad for you. And he would say, what? And then I would have to hang up and tell my customer, he's not doing well, and he probably doesn't remember how to do good things anymore. I'm the best you have. It was a vicious cycle that I got tired of repeating, so I swore it off altogether. Uh, for real though, it, it did get to the point where I was turning down commissions, which if you are just starting out and watching this video, never do that. Don't turn down commissions. It's so bad for business. And in this business, you never know when you are gonna get your next sale, or where it's gonna come from. So don't do that, that's stupid, I was being stupid. Anyway, I'm over it now. And it seems like the same kids who were constantly asking for knockoff Jack and Sally pieces are over it as well because I never get the request anymore. So this seems a bit more fresh. You know what movies of his never seem to get any love? Sleepy Hollow and Sweeney Todd. Both of those movies are so good but no one ever talks about them. Sleepy Hollow was legitimately creepy. And I would, I would have loved to have seen Tim Burton do more with actual horror films. Like he did so good with the atmosphere and lighting and his live action films. And I just think that he could have put some stuff out there that would make your skin crawl if he, if he really focused on that. that would, I think that would be awesome. And do you guys ever... So do you ever wonder what other movies would have been like if they had a different director? Like, what if Stanley Kubrick did The Thing? Or if Sam Raimi did Nightmare on Elm Street? Because I do. I do all the time, actually. I'm, I'm always wondering, like, what would have this movie have been like if a different director had it? Well, one that I was really thinking about lately was uh, what if Tim Burton had done It? If you think about it, Pennywise and Beetlejuice have a lot of similarities, right? Like they can change their appearance into whatever they want. They scare people for their own purposes. Uh, both exist inside and outside of our worlds. And I don't know, food for thought. I think it would be neat, you know, but not like not now. Tim Burton, I'm talking like Tim Burton 1995, like with practical effects and claymation, I think that would have been dope. Anyway, uh, moving on. You know what else is interesting? My wife just told me this today. Uh, it's completely off topic, but uh, it's a little trivia nugget you can throw in your bag. Uh, you know the scene in Home Alone where Kevin finds the picture of Buzz's girlfriend and says, Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. So the director didn't want to actually use some p poor beauty challenge girl for the picture because he didn't want a little girl to be recognized on the street and have people yelling woof at her. 
So the art director of the movie had a son that willingly volunteered for the role. So they threw a wig on this kid and took his picture. See, folks, now that's a director that cares about the well-being of his actors. Cuties, take notes. If you wanted to do it right, you would have thrown wigs on boys and made them dance. Cuties, too. Wig boy boogaloo. Anyway, so so for the art supplies I used in this video. Uh, uh, so I used cardstock. I, I painted on brown cardstock, as you can see. That is not watercolor paper. Uh, cardstock... <coughs> Ugh. Yeah. Cardstock is a pain in the butt to work on sometimes because it's not thick and it doesn't absorb the water as well as watercolor paper. So it gets real bendy. I had to tape this sucker down at a few different spots because it was just getting a little too, a little too rambunctious on me. Yeah. Just expect to have some issues if you paint on cardstock. I, I do enjoy painting on cardstock. I like the way it looks on brown cardstock or like a sepia tone or tan cardstock. Uh, as for the paints, I used uh, high pigment watercolors. Now, normally I don't like using high pigment uh, if I'm going to be painting on white paper. Um, I don't know why, just as I've said in other videos, it doesn't suit my style. But if you're going to be doing uh, painting on dark cardstock or dark anything. You want the pigment to be uh, very, very dense. I don't know if that's the right terminology. You want a bunch of pigments in there. I didn't go to art school. I, I just hear things. So uh, pigments, use them if you're going <laughs> to... That's so stupid. Anyway, uh, they're high pigment watercolors for painting on dark surfaces. Uh, and my markers, they're Faber-Castell markers. They are my favorite markers. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, but boy, I wish they were. They last a long time, it seems. Most of them. Most of the... It's wild how long the small-tipped Faber-Castell markers last. They... Well, I swear there are markers in here that I use almost every day that have lasted me three to four months. And I do a lot of line work with those little tiny tipped markers. So get yourself some favorite castles. They're great for line work. And I think I finally got my top down setup figured out. Uh, it's still pretty jerry rigged. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you can see the legs of the tripod in the shot. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, down the road, I may build an overhead rig to shoot on. Uh, the artist Jason Spencer, or better known as Killer Napkins from St. Louis, he just posted up a picture of the setup that he built, and I think it's a great idea. Uh, just not having to deal with tripods and anchors, and I'm, I'm literally, so my setup, I have a rope, tied to the hook on my tripod, wrapped around three drawers on my desk, and sitting on a couple notebooks. So, yeah, I'd like to not be doing that anymore. And uh, on that note, I think that about wraps up this painting, because it's done. I hope you guys like it. Holy crap. A wind just picked up. It is getting ready to storm. All right, well, anyway, it's time to do the Featured Artist segment, the segment that I've been trying to get started for a while now so that you guys can discover some of the amazing artists that I've met along my way. This week's Featured Artist is Tyler Bernholtz. Tyler is a 21-year-old artist that has been creating his whole life. He gets his inspiration from vintage toys like Cupid dolls and trolls, along with antiques, and the simple wonders that he finds in nature. His biggest passions are painting and illustration, but he also loves sculpting, textile art, and other mediums. So for me, I love this dude's work. For one thing, he's not afraid of using color. He's like, you want color? I don't know if I can swing that, and then bam! Taste the rainbow and tell me you love it. And also, for some reason, his work gives off this crazy Jim Henson vibe. Uh, to me, at least. Some of it almost feels like 
concept art for the Jim Henson workshop. Funny story about meeting Tyler, he caught up with me on social media and it turns out that he had actually bought one of my old acrylic paintings from someone on the internet before he actually knew me. We've been connected on Facebook for quite some time now and we got to see him grow as an artist, which has been really cool. I always saw that he had potential to do great things, but he's really been coming into his own style in the past couple years and it's been cool just watching that develop. I highly suggest you search him out on social media. I've put the links to his socials in the description down below. And that's gonna do it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it enough to press the like button. And if you really loved it and wanna see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. My next video is the beginning of a series called Let Me Draw Your Childhood Fears, which entails all the people on my social media telling me they're funny and at other times utterly horrific fears from their childhood. And then I get to bring that fear to life on my iPad or paper or whatever I feel like creating it on. Uh, I've already started it and it has been enjoyable. It's been a lot of fun. And please, in the comments section, tell me who your favorite Tim Burton character is, Nightmare Before Christmas or otherwise. If you feel like it, tell me what your childhood fear was and it might make it into one of the next videos. <sighs> See you later.